Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. The world's largest startup incubator has just opened here in Paris, a 34,000 square meter space entirely dedicated to young tech entrepreneurs. Station F is set to change the face of the tech ecosystem in the French capital. Plus, we'll look to the stars with a smart telescope by French startup Bonus. Stellina is a huge boost to amateur astronomy equipment as it enables every one of you to explore the cosmos from the comfort of your home. But first, a unique startup competition between Paris and New York City has just taken place. It's called Pitch in the Plane, and as the name suggests, the goal is to pitch an innovative idea to a panel of international investors 35,000 feet above the Atlantic. Karina Chabour and Claire Williams have this report. He's known as the president's Mr. Digital. For his first official trip outside Europe, the sneaker-wearing Minister of Digital Affairs is heading to New York with seven French startups. Their goal, break into the US market. Make our administration great again, make our planet great again, make our startup great again. We're going to make France an example, and I assure you we're off to a good start already. Now it's up to you. A pep talk ahead of a long journey across the Atlantic to the French Touch Conference in New York. On the way there, the startups have to win over a jury made up of investors and business experts. Ten minutes is short and long at the same time, but it's enough for us to judge if an entrepreneur can explain what they're doing and work out if they're determined and passionate. They have ten minutes to do that. It's quick, but it's enough. This 28-year-old has invented a connected device which allows wine to breathe. With your smartphone, you take a photo of the label. We calculate the condition the wine is in. And the only thing left to do is serve yourself a glass of wine. And this biologist has created an indoor organic vegetable patch. It's about this size. It can be two times bigger or two times smaller. It all depends on how much space people have at home. The digital affairs minister looks at home here. In a startup atmosphere, Macron's on Marsh movement has tried to emulate. We don't have to put on airs and graces. We showed that during the En Marche campaign. We can see it here with these seasoned investors and entrepreneurs. We don't have to be too serious when we're doing very serious things. The seven startups have arrived here in New York, the concrete jungle where dreams are made. Their dream is to make it in the United States, and the French Touch Conference is designed to help them do that. The Frenchman behind the idea is Gaël Duval, an entrepreneur, investor, and enthusiastic Emmanuel Macron supporter from the start. I know that. The maker of an indoor map system for buildings won the first prize. The jury gave a second prize, though, for innovation to the wine device maker. And the others aren't too disappointed. They've made contacts in New York they hope will help them enter the U.S. market. It's in an old train station in the heart of Paris that French business tycoon Xavier Niel has decided to set up the world's biggest tech incubator. It's a 34,000 square meter space that's set to welcome over 1,000 startups. And among other things, entrepreneurs will have access to some 3,000 collaborative desks and a brand new fab lab. The Tech24 team was at the inauguration. We spoke to Nicolas Prinsen, the founder and CEO of Glows, a new ebook reader for smartphones and tablets that will be accelerated with Station F as of September. We asked him how Station F can help his business. Let's take a listen. The way I see Station, Station F is that it's a great platform for entrepreneurship. It provides a great network because it's going to concentrate a lot of great talent, entrepreneurs, engineers, and we have a lot of great ones in France. It's a great way to emulate all this environment and for people like us to recruit. Number two, it gives a lot of visibility, especially with big partners. A lot of big companies are investing here, want to build partnerships to support 
uh, startups with their knowledge, with their know-how and their experience. And number three, it offers prestige because everybody in the world is going to know about Station F, the largest incubator in the world, and that just brings a great light on what we do here. And everybody knows now there's great technology, great startups in Paris that are scaling worldwide. That's the kind of thing Station F can bring to this environment. And researchers from France are leading an ambitious European project to develop a unique camera that could be a game changer for self-driving cars and drones. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. Why is this camera so special? Well, this project is called ULPEC, or Ultra Low Power Event Based Camera. And as the name suggests, this camera comes to life or the optical sensors come to life only when there's a change in the scene. Now, conventional cameras, what they do is they take frames. So now if there is no change in the scene from one frame to the other, uh, there's a, you know, a lot of extraneous information is generated, which is fine for normal use. But in case of self-driving cars and drones, you need, you need a camera that re or responds very quickly. And that is something these uh, researchers in France and elsewhere in Europe, they are trying to achieve. Now, the optical sensors are made uh, by the French company Chronocam. These optical sensors are special because unlike the conventional cameras, uh, they consist of individual pixels that act on their own and they come to life only when there's a change, there's a, some dynamic change in the scene. If there's nothing happening in the scene, the camera won't record anything. So, so you don't store extra information that you don't need. Exactly, so that saves a lot on power because you don't need that much power to uh, process this uh, unnecessary information. And secondly, because there's less data generated, it can react quickly to changes. So these, this is one of the specialties of the camera, the optical sensors. and. Uh, after these uh, optical sensors, they catch this light, which of course, uh, these sensors come to life only when the, the light, it crosses a certain uh, threshold. And only when it, re it crosses that threshold, the optical sensor, they start recording these images. And then this, uh, these images are then turned into electrical signals and then it's sent to the artificial neural network in the camera. And now this camera will also mimic the human brain. How will it do that? Well, the heart of the camera is uh, the artificial neural network, which essentially consists of integrated circuits, which you can also call as artificial neurons. And then there's a very special electronic component, which has been developed by University of Bordeaux and CNRS Thales. It's called a memristor. It's a short form for memory resistor. It's, it's a unique component uh, which was proposed first in 1971 and which was realized in the mathematical model in 2008. So this memristor developed by University of Bordeaux, it consists of, of it is made of rather ferroelectric material. In this case, it's uh, bismuth ferrite. So what this does is it acts like the synapse in our brain. So you can tune this, uh, this memristor by using voltage. The resistance can be tuned using voltage. And the more it gets stimulated by voltage, the network d generates this ability to learn. So essentially, in, just to give a summary, it is an artificial intelligence in the form of hardware, which is quite unique because normally artificial intelligence, as we know, consists of crunching data, using supercomputers, which means you need a lot of power. And by using this uh, particular concept, you can save on a lot of power and get uh, the results very quickly. So this camera, for example, can react in microseconds to any changes in the scene. Well, thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to test 24. The universe is now at our fingertips thanks to Stellina. It's a unique smart telescope created by a startup in Montpellier, southern France, called Vaonis. Dan, tell us more about how we can enjoy the night sky with this telescope. Well, I can tell you from my personal experience that this is an amateur astronomer's dream. You don't have to worry about uh, focusing your lens at a particular celestial object. All you have to do is use an application on your smartphone uh, uh, point out at the object, which like, for example, if you want to take a picture of Andromeda Galaxy, so you just point it in the app, and because this app is connected to the telescope, the, uh, the lens will automatically point towards that object, and it will start taking pictures. And now, find the galaxy by itself. Yeah, absolutely. It is because th that's, that's what makes it uh, a smart telescope. Now, it's also very compact, as you can see, so it weighs seven kilograms, so you can easily put it in a a small bag and you just carry it around and as uh, if, if wherever you want. So for example, if you 
are lucky enough to be in a uh, you know, place where there's no light pollution. You can take great pictures. And you can also use this in, in cities. Normally, light pollution is a big, uh, big deterrent uh, to use for using telescopes in cities. But this telescope comes with a special filter that uh, filters out this light. Of course, you won't get the same quality pictures as you get in, uh, in, the, countryside. in the countryside. But still, it's, it's, st it's still a better option. And secondly, it also has an anti-fog uh, system. So the lens, it will heat up and the fog will get cleared and you can still keep on taking pictures. It comes embedded with a rotor. So at, at the bottom, you'll see the telescope, it can move. So it moves on its own. It's an automatic telescope. You don't have to touch it at all. It also moves in this, uh, this, segment, this part also moves, the part of the lens. The lens itself is uh, 80, mil, it's 80 mm lens. Uh, it also has a computer inside it. So it processes uh, the image. And more importantly, it has uh, image sensors as well. So it, is, it packs a lot of punch in terms of sensors, in terms of computation, and in terms of, uh, I don't know, it's very easy to use. So it's, it's a perfect, uh, perfect uh, device for someone who's interested in astronomy and who wants to you know, go deeper into it, take some, take some good quality pictures. So it is, it is a great uh, device for astrophot astrophotography. And also, if you have an internet connection, you can share all of those pictures on social media and also uh, within the Stellina user community. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed the show and do stay with us here on France 24.